If you're anything like me, then you probably have a shopping slash hoarding problem and <laughs> you buy things just because they're on sale or they are like a stellar price. But then what happens is you get it home and you're like, this does not go with my home decor whatsoever. What was I thinking? I know what we were thinking. It was on sale or it was a good price. But today I want to show you how to take some items that may not go with your home decor and how we can flip it to fit most home decor. So let's get right into the video. Starting off, we are gonna do this cast iron or it might be wrought iron piece. I bought this, it was a great deal. I listed it on the website and it did not sell. So we're gonna flip it. And I'm pretty sure some of you have this kind of material in your house somewhere. So I am going to start off with some old school and I am going to put some salt wash in there. I want a little bit of texture on here for the paint to cling to a little down the road in this video. So I'm taking a paint uh, paintbrush, duh, I'm taking a paintbrush. I am taking a chippy brush and I'm just sporadically putting it on my piece. I am not trying to cover the entire thing. You just want to get messy. You want to let go a little bit and just trust the process here. I'm going to let this completely dry. And then you are going to see in this next clip, the, um, do you see it like in the middle of the detailed piece that like lighter gray, it's just going to add a kind of flaky texture to it. I do carry salt wash on my website. That link is in the description box. Now I'm coming in with pennies from heaven by DIY. This is a liquid patina and I am going to brush it on a little bit goes a very long way. So do not submerge your brush or you are going to be sorry. I just put a little bit on the ends and then I even tap the excess of it off. And I am going to, again, sporadically put it on this piece. Now this dries super fast, you guys, and it is gorga. Oh my gosh, it's gonna look beautiful on anything you put it on. So here's how it looks dried. So this is now with our old school and salt wash, pennies from heaven. I do have this available and it's in stock. And now we're gonna do the drip drop method. So I got vintage linen, I mixed it with some water. We're taking that chip brush and we are going to put it over everything we painted, not everything. You're gonna, again, I'm gonna use this word sporadically, put it in random places on your piece. You want it to drip, you don't want it to look uniform. And then I'm going to take that spray bottle and I'm going to spritz it over that white so it starts running down the piece. You guys saw me do this with the candle holders um, a few videos back, same concept. And the more water you put on, the more paint you're gonna take off. Now I'm gonna take a paper towel and I am going to dab the excess of that water and that paint off. Now, it looks almost like I'm wiping it all off, but once it starts drying down, that white, the vintage linen, is really gonna pop again, and I do have two of those still in stock right now, and I will be um, restocked, you guys, next Tuesday. And look at how gorgeous this looks, but we, we are not finished, okay? But you can see where that salt wash is, see right there? How the white just settled into that texture right there. And it's just creating this very old world look. And this is very popular right now. So take out that wrought iron, that cast iron you're not using, any of that, and let's make it new again. After this, I'm gonna go in with my clear wax. This is going to help the next step um, when we apply a different wax. So you want to make sure you cover your entire piece. This is gonna seal your decor item for you. Now, you guys, the party started. We are taking Shipwrecked. It is this teal, beautiful wax. It is very pigmented, so a little goes a long way. And again, I'm just gonna put that randomly on my piece. Now, because we put that clear wax on first, it's gonna help me wipe back this teal wax. Now, if you like the bright, you do you and you keep it as it is and then you don't touch it and you're done with it. I did not want it this bright. I wanted it more like cloudy remnants of it, like it's patinaed. So I put it everywhere I want it 
And then we're gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe it back. And the reason I'm using a microfiber cloth is because I have that salt wash on there and I find that paper towels pull on the salt wash and it's just messy. So now I'm just wiping back that shipwrecked and oh my word, you know, you have something in your mind, you don't know where it's gonna go. But this turned out more amazing than I could have ever imagined. This is gonna be available on the website for purchase and y'all are capable of doing it, okay? It might look like a lot, but I promise you, you are capable. So get out that old decor and try it, okay? This is how, look at this, you guys. Do you see how stunning it is? And we are going to get close up. I even put a screw in my wall for this decor. That's how much I loved it. You can see where all of that white settled into that salt wash. And then that pennies um, from heaven, it really darkened up after we put the coat of shipwrecked on there too. So it wasn't like bright, you know, it definitely darkened up for us, which is what I wanted for this piece. And then I, you guys, I gotta give you a close up, of course, of the detail and then the pockets for the can't look it. Oh my gosh, it's stunning. I can't, I can't believe it. If you guys are digging this, then comment shipwrecked down, down below, down below. All right. I also had this listed and I'm sure a lot of you guys have critters that maybe you're like, mm, this doesn't really fit my style anymore. So let me show you how we're going to flip it into a more modernized critter. So I am taking old school. This was my first time using this color and I do have some in stock. Or wait, no, maybe I don't. And I am using the Perfectionist brush, which I do have to reorder. I apologize, you guys. And this brush is absolutely fabulous if you work with items that have a lot of detail in it because it has a pointed end and it really gets into all of those nook and crannies. I am obsessed with it. This is how, um, what am I using? Old school looks dried down. I really loved it, especially for this piece. I painted the entire rooster in this color. Now I cover, I painted the eyes, but I didn't want to keep it like that. The rooster actually had really pretty like plastic eyes. So all I did was take a paintbrush, dip it in some water because DIY paint is water soluble um, until it's cleared. And I wiped back that paint that we put over its eyes and now we have those original beautiful eyes. All right, next step, I am taking um, vintage linen and I put it on the tip of my brush and then I wipe almost all of it off. And then I am dry brushing. So this is not white wax, we are using paint on this. And it gave it so much detail and it's only, what I like about the dry brushing is it's only hitting on the details versus wax is going to look a little bit more cloudy, I guess. Um, and um, I don't know, I don't know. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? I hope so. So after this, I did not show it, but I took this piece outside and cleared it with clear matte by Rust-Oleum. So it did darken up just a tad bit, but look at how gorgeous this rooster ended up turning out. Definitely more modern. It's gonna fit more decor styles and hopefully it'll sell now on my website. John actually even said, and we don't decorate with critters. He was like, I would even keep this because those details pop even more than when it was that other color. So comment with the rooster head if you're digging this. That blue vase is available on my website too. You guys, I hope you're enjoying the video right now. And I hope it's inspiring you either to get that decor that you've been hoarding, the old decor that's in your house, and make it new again. A lot of these things might seem intimidating, but what I love about them is that it's kind of messy or just painting and it's things you are definitely capable of. So get out the old home decor, get your supplies together and start flipping it, okay? If you guys are interested in any of the paint products or even the flips that I did in today's video, then make sure to visit unicorndustdesigns.com. I sell my paint products there, my upcycles, thrifted items, a little bunch of stuff. So go check that out. And I also have all the links down in my description box for our Facebook group where you can share your crafts, 
my Facebook business page where I do lives as well as Instagram. So you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging this channel, then please make sure to like and make sure to comment. It's an absolutely free way. You can help me out. It lets YouTube know you're enjoying my video and they're more likely to push it out to other people. All right, you guys, let's get back into the rest of them. I know y'all have some candlesticks that are outdated or that you can't help buying like me because I have, I have a stash, let me tell you. So I am going, I tried listing these. These are all wood and they are beautiful, but they didn't sell. So we are taking apothecary and I am putting some salt wash in there. I want this really thick. So not milkshake consistency, like I don't know what consistency, but like cement, no, I don't know, but it is very thick. And again, I'm gonna take my finger, you guys have seen me do this before on the book ends, and I am going to smear it on our candlesticks. If you, are, if you have sensitive skin, please wear gloves while doing this because I am using the salt wash. However, I, I don't have any issues. So I am putting this randomly on here. This is gonna dry and it's gonna hold all of that beautiful texture. So whatever it looks like when you put it on, that is how it's gonna dry down and it's not gonna move. So you guys gotta play around with it, but trust the process with salt wash, okay? So I'm gonna do this with all three. I'm gonna let it completely dry down. The thicker the salt wash, the longer it's going to take for your piece to dry. So keep that in mind. This is what it looks like. Do you see all that chippiness and the texture up top, the different layers it looks like it has? Yep. That's what I love. I do have salt wash in 10 ounce uh, kits and then I have the big boy. All right. Now we are taking the little dipper brush and I am taking vintage linen. Once again, it's my new favorite white. And I am going to coat all of our uh, candlesticks. I'm going to end up doing two coats of this. This little dipper brush is like the perfect size for smalls um, if you do a lot of them. And I'm also out of this one too. You guys don't hate me, okay? I'm restocking as fast as I can. All right, so this is how it looks. So you can see where that salt wash is. You can see all of that coming through. Look at the glob right there. Yes. And you guys are probably thinking like, Sammy, why did you make that salt wash apothecary if you were just going to paint white over it? Well, you just hang on tight because I'm going to show you why. So now that that is completely dry, I'm going to take a wet microfiber cloth and we are going to start wet distressing this piece down. Now, anywhere that I put that salt wash with the apothecary paint, I'm going to go over there, over there, over it. And I'm going to start wiping it back. And you can see right there, the apothecary starts coming through as well. So this is a nice weathered look to give candlesticks. So it's showing the natural wood. Then it's showing the apothecary and the salt wash and then the white. So it looks like it's been painted several times and weathered. And you can see I still was able to bring out all those beautiful details that were on top even though I put some salt wash on there. So that didn't take anything away from our candlesticks. I definitely farmhoused the crap out of these, okay? I didn't even mind the brush strokes. And if you've watched my channel, you know I cannot stand brush strokes, but I left them. So I do this with all the candles and then even on the top rim where there was paint, again, water soluble, so we just wipe it off with some water. Now I'm gonna take clear wax and I'm so glad I got a great angle. <laughs> Of nothing but that is it after you apply that clear wax they are sealed let them cure overnight and then you're gonna have these beautiful updated candlesticks I hoard candlesticks I could probably do one set of candlesticks every video for a year and be good but do you see that apothecary coming through and the wood these are absolutely gorgeous to me and they are, and then look at with the bookends, both of those items are available on the website. Oh, they make me happy. Anything chippy makes me happy. Let's be real. All right. This last one is super easy. I am going to melt down some Dollar Tree candles and there are these like coffee, they look like little coffee cups. They're so cute. And all I did was fill the bottom of my pan with some water. We are gonna put it on a light boil, and then we're gonna use these pewter bowls. How adorable are those? 
Nobody bought them, so we're gonna give them purpose again, and that is by making them into candles. So I melted them down, and let me tell you, this was a hot mess. First, do not use a good pan, okay? Just don't do it, and just be prepared, because I made a mess, and you'll see. I accidentally dropped one of them back in the water, and then, yep, there we go. It goes all over the floor and stuff. Good thing that isn't good floor but I did clean it up. Okay, so we melt and then we pour into your bowl. I am just going to take the wick that came in the original candles and I am going to loop it over this skewer. Let these dry down. And y'all, these smell amazing. Like my entire basement smells like French van vanilla and creme brulee. I don't know if they're going to light and smell that good because they are Dollar Tree, but it was a great way of getting these bowls. Like if you're somebody that likes buying china at thrift stores, but you don't know what to do with it, this would be a great way of giving it new purpose. Whoever receives it, or if it's you, you can repurpose the bowl over and over again. So I hope you guys enjoyed these fun, flips that you can do with old home decor or decor that you just like to buy and hoard. So you guys, all of it's available on my website. I appreciate you all so much and I hope you're having an amazing weekend with your friends and your family and I will be back here on Tuesday. I hope people are picking up what I'm putting down, you know? <sighs> I just want my videos to do well again. But I'm thankful for everyone that does watch. Heh <laughs>